Hey, uh, so today, today I'm going to do another video for our agency SEO secrets series. And this video is about what actually works when doing the uh, SEO for e-commerce stores. And the strategies listed here also work for all other different SEO projects, but this is specifically tailored towards e-commerce stores. So yeah, if you run an e-commerce store, you, you probably would have the most to benefit from watching this video. And uh, also the idea is that the SEO agencies, they do a lot of different things. We have tried outsourcing SEO to other agencies as well, just to learn what the other agencies are doing. Uh, there are a lot of good agencies out there. I'm not commenting on how, how, how good or bad we are, but, but like the main thing we see that's like the, the first thing that most agencies offer is like technical SEO, technical SEO optimization, like a technical SEO audit and so on. But based on what we see, a technical SEO is like a necessary thing to do, but it's it's not really going to move the needle in most cases. Like I would say based on our clients, like maybe one out of 20 clients to see an actual benefit from fixing all the technical SEO issues. And most of them do see benefits from it. We still do it. We, we want to make sure that there aren't any bottlenecks or there aren't any issues holding back the rankings. So we still do it, but the effect usually is no more than like 10%. So if you were getting like 500 organic visitors per month, now you're getting 550. This doesn't really uh, justify the SEO expense or the agency expense. So this is why I don't even list the technical SEO in the list here. But yeah, let's 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 get into the list. And these are the main things and also sort of based on what I think you should start from when you're doing SEO for yourself or what we usually start from when we're doing SEO for one of our clients. So yeah, the uh, first thing is uh, knowing the right keywords people search for the most for your most important products. So in this example, uh, I'm doing uh, like, let's, let's say that I have a store or you have a store selling coffee machines and you probably then have a collection base. Like it, it's, it's not likely that you're only selling one coffee machine. Probably you're selling many different ones. Uh, you have like, let's say you have five coffee machines and you have a category page. If you're using Shopify, you would have like uh, your website.com slash collections slash coffee machines, for example, or coffee machine, and you would have the category page. But like the first thing to do, or the most important thing to do is to figure out like what's the uh, main uh, keyword people use the most to search for the specific item that you're selling. And uh, so, yeah, the process that I would go through is like, of course, we have age access to Ahrefs and I would recommend you to have access to either Ahrefs or SEMrush. If you're serious about doing SEO for your e-commerce store, but if you don't, if you're st starting out and you want to keep the costs low, then one thing you can do is you could simply go to Google and type in your main keyword, the way you know, or what you think the main head term is. And uh, I would, I would estimate it would be coffee machine. So like the, the most search for term that would describe my product or the product that I'm selling and the collection page. So, so how would, what, what's the like the highest search for term? to find my specific category page that I'm trying to optimize for. So in this case, I, I, I just went to the U United States search results and, or just Google United States and typed in coffee machine. And what I want to see is like, who's currently ranking at the top? And I'm looking for what are the main keywords that they have optimized for? And I'm, I am looking for the giants of, or the behemoths like Target, Amazon, and like the peak guys. Because the peak guys, they, uh, they have... Uh, large SEO teams that have done the work for you, meaning that like you could look at what they are ranking for or what they, what are the keywords that they have optimized for. And here I see that Amazon has optimized for the keyword coffee machine. So this is almost exactly the same that I listed here. Target has coffee makers, which is interesting. This tells me that maybe coffee makers is something that I should target instead. Maybe this keyword is searched more. Best Buy has coffee makers and coffee machines here. <laughs> so this is an interesting case. And in this case, like if you have no access to tools, then you could choose either coffee makers, coffee machines, or option number three, you could do the same as Best Buy is doing. You could try to optimize for uh, both keywords here, coffee makers and coffee machines. So yeah, you, these are two different keywords and you could have both of them uh, listed in your most important places. So yeah, this is the first step, finding out what's the most search for keyword for your product collection page. And if you do have access to Ahrefs, this is more exact, then here you would simply go to Keyword Explorer, go uh, type in the main term again, like, like we did here on Google. And, uh, but with Ahrefs, you actually see how much search volume there is yeah, locally. Like here, I'm looking for SV here shows the uh, local search volume. So yeah, sorry, I, I typed in coffee machine, uh, United States, uh, the search, and then I, I chose related terms and also rank four. So 
what this gives me is a, a big list of different keywords that the websites that are currently ranking for the term coffee machine, like we saw Target, Best Buy and Amazon and so on, and then many, many others. If they're ranking for coffee machine, what other keywords are they ranking for? So this gives me a list of different keywords that people type into Google to find coffee machines. And uh, also this list is sorted based on how many searches there are per month in the United States for this particular keyword. And what I see here is that although I figured that coffee machine would be the, like the most searched for keyword, I do find coffee machine or sorry. Yeah, I see coffee maker has 95,000 searches per month. But if I looked at the uh, just coffee machine, this had 43,000. So way less coffee machine again. 43,000, but if I go to uh, related terms here to see like uh, related keywords, then uh, from here I found Coffee Maker has more than double the amount of searches. So maybe it would be better to optimize for Coffee Maker. And also another thing you can do is you can look for who are currently ranking for coffee machines and uh, or coffee machine and what are they using. And, and again, this is similar to what we did with Google. We saw that again, like Best Buy has Coffee Makers and Coffee Machines. So they're trying to yeah, target both main keywords. And this is in, in this particular niche, I think this is one of the best strategies to use. Like you could either, because they are quite closely related and you could also have like coffee makers and machines, for example, then you also cover both, both of the main keywords. So yeah, but it's just the main point is you need to know what are the main terms, what's the main keyword to optimize for, because this will give you an edge because most of your competitors, depending on the niche, how most of your competitors don't do this research. So if you do this, if you are helping Google, like make it easier for Google to figure out what the page is about. And, and uh, yeah, and if you have them, if you're optimizing your page for this particular keyword that's being searched for the most, you will have the highest odds of ranking in, from a keyword perspective. Now the second step. So yeah, first step again, what's the main keyword? What are the main keywords? I wouldn't try and include more than three keywords in the, in the main places. So optimize for no more than two keywords. One would be ideal. So in this case, if I want to only optimize for one, I would choose coffee maker. Now the second thing, second most important thing, which we should already covered or touched on, uh, uh, is optimizing your actual pages. And now like, here's an example, Proctor Silex, they're ranking really well for the keyword coffee makers. Yay. Did I find them? Okay. They were, yeah. Anyway, they were ranking really well for the keyword coffee makers. Ah, oh, yeah, there was another keyword. I'm looking at coffee machine right now, but anyway, they, they're ranking really highly for coffee makers and they're getting a lot of traffic to this page, given that they are a low authority site and they're ranking with, or they're competing with Best Buy, Target, Amazon, and so on. And uh, yeah, the next step is to optimize, uh, make sure that this page or this collection page is actually optimized for, for the, for the most important keyword, which you found in the previous step. So here you, you see that you should have the uh, main keyword in the, in the main uh, first title or the H1 title, they have it here. You should have uh, the uh, main keyword in the first se few sentences, which they also have here. And you should have the main keyword in the uh, URL here as well. So they're covering like two, it's three out of three for them. So they're doing a great job here, optimizing for it. And also, yeah, you should also have the, uh, sub some content around, or some content on the, on the collection page as well. Of course, you should list your products. And yeah, they also have some additional blog articles listed here. Coffee maker, the main keyword again in the, in the lower tier title, this is an H2 title. So here again, a good, and a good signal to Google. And yeah, this is, this is well optimized. So this page is well optimized and this is also what you should do. So find out what the main keyword is and then optimize your collection page to rank for that keyword. And the, the main three places are the URL, include the main keyword in the URL, keep the URL as short as possible. Also really important H1, I would even say the most important place to have it in the H1, in the main title of the page and also in the, in the text somewhere and ideally as close to the uh, top as possible, like in the first few sentences or uh, in the first paragraph. So yeah, number two was optimizing the actual page. So, uh, and number three is linking to those most important or most profitable collection pages from your homepage and your main menu. So two really key places from your homepage and the, and the, and the main menu. So here in, in this example, again, Proctor Silex, they are li linking to the main, uh, this coffee makers collection page from their main menu. Ideally if like, and also if you were doing your main menu, I would, I would also suggest to uh, list your most profitable products or most important products to the top. So yeah, they're also saying air fryers, blenders, and many different things. Uh, maybe coffee makers isn't their most profitable or most important product, but yeah, just 
moving it a bit higher in, in the hierarchy would, would, would do an even better job. But yeah, this is, this is well done. And also the second thing I, I mentioned is also linking from your homepage. So here, this is their homepage. This is just a good example. They're not our, our, our clients, but yeah, coffee makers here, you see they're linking uh, from uh, the homepage to this uh, particular uh, category page, which is super important. So this just gives a lot of uh, ranking power and a lot of, sends a lot of link juice to uh, this particular page. So yeah, this is the third thing. And the fourth thing is building contextual external links with the main keywords as anchor text. So if this sounded like Chinese, what this means is, and this is also the hardest thing to do because then, and now you need to do some sales. You need to, or you need to get some actual backlinks. You need to get other websites linking to your coffee machines page and when they are linking to you, you want them to link out from, from their articles or yeah, articles are the best place to add. Like if another website has a blog section, then you getting an article there and getting a link from an article that's the article should be relevant to you, to what you're selling, like the coffee machines. And uh, yeah, then when they are linking out from that article, you should have them link out from the exact, using the exact keywords, like coffee maker here, like this, in this example. They uh, should use coffee maker or something super similar or super close to it, or like using the exact anchor or something really close to it that you want to rank for as the anchor text. And the anchor text is just the words that are used to, to add the link to. So now if someone clicks on this article, if someone clicks to this uh, coffee maker here, this takes them to uh, the uh, coffee makers page of your site potentially. So yeah, this is, this is like a, a super important thing to do. It's really hard to do, but this is also what moves the needle a lot. And this is, but, but also you should do this uh, once you've done the previous three steps before, because this is the most expensive thing to do. And if you neglect, or if you don't do the first three steps, you can force rankings with only these things here, but then you will have to build more backlinks and backlinks cost them money. They are the most expensive thing to do because uh, as well, they are the most, uh, the hardest thing to do as well. So yeah. And number five is uh, to answer questions surrounding your topics. So if you're uh, selling coffee machines, you should go to, uh, you should find out what the questions are that people are asking around your niche, around coffee machines. Like uh, this is a list from Ahrefs, like different questions around coffee makers, coffee machines, how to clean a coffee maker. Yeah, yeah. you just need to co go through these keywords here and find out which ones are re re uh, related to your products and just answer, answer those questions and uh, write blog articles answering these questions. You don't need to write like uh, long memoirs, like just to, however many words would suffice to, to um, satisfy the user intent, to actually answer the question, do that. And then from those blog articles, link out to your product pages. So if you're talking about how to clean a coffee maker, write about it. And then also like, uh, here are some products from our product range that we would recommend to buy, or you don't even need to promote like that. You can just, when you're writing like the keyword coffee maker, just add an internal link to the coffee makers page. And this already will um, help you rank higher like adding an internal link. So, and this is one thing, like just answering the questions, the more you answer, the bigger of a topical authority you become on the, on, on, on the topic. And this is also why, or in the niche, and this is also how uh, a lot of smaller sites are able to compete with Amazon's best buys and so on. Because like, if you're only selling coffee machines, then a, a good way to beat Amazon best buy and these big guys in the rankings is like, if you have a lot of content around coffee machines, because then Google sees these articles and they can understand that hey, this small brand, yes, they are small, but they know a lot about coffee machines. They're niche specialists. So they deserve a higher ranking on Google for those terms because they have more content. They, they are more what the user is looking for when they are searching for coffee machines because they cover the topic in more detail. Like if someone goes to that site, they can find more information and more, maybe more products, although that is really uh, that important, but yeah. If you cover the topic in more detail with your blog articles, then it will just will give you an upper hand competing against the behemoths because they can't possibly write 50 or 100 articles on every topic or every product that they sell. Amazon is selling millions of products. They like, if, if they want to have 50 articles on every product or pro collection, they would have, <laughs> they would need to produce a lot of content and they're not going to do that, but you can do that if you're just selling one thing. So that's like a, something you can do. And then also the second strategy or the last thing that I'm going to mention is, uh, also, you could go to Ahrefs or, or like if Ahrefs, you could find out what are some keywords related to your products where people are looking for like roundup articles. So best X for Y, like best coffee maker for a small kitchen, or I don't know, best, best small coffee maker or these kinds of different variations of your product. 
And then you could you could write those articles, write those roundup articles, and uh, list your own products there. Why not? Because someone's ranking. You could like, and your competitors are already ranking, or some. And, and, and if someone's ranking, and if they're not their competitor, they're probably sending people to your competitors. So this is just for business practices. Always, always be ethical. Don't recommend your products if they are not the best for like I don't know for, for a small kitchen or something like that. But that's up to you to decide. Uh, I I. Uh, I would I would recommend to do these articles if you actually have products uh, that are good for the particular search then that people is, people are typing into. But but yeah, this is another great strategy. We're doing this a lot for our clients, and it's re working really well. Like and also in 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 some niches, like in some e-commerce niches, there are a lot of searches for like uh, blue let's say let's say blue coffee makers. Then you could have like a even if you don't want to have a, a specific collection page for blue coffee makers, maybe you could have like a, an article about like top ten blue coffee makers and then you list your three products if you have three products three blue coffee makers random example sorry but yeah i hope you get the point list your own products at the top and then also mention like some of your competitors and so on yeah just satisfy the user intent and try to try to get the click try to get the sale and uh, you are also increasing your top authority if you're doing that uh, so that's pretty much it the last thing that i want to mention is that if you want to get our number one seo hack like the most I, I, right in this video i thought about five different things that actually move the needle if you want to get like the biggest needle mover, the most effective SEO technique, then it's the first link in the description. Now I recommend that you grab that. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions. This is the process that we do for our clients. Depending on how many, depending on how many pages or products they have, the more work there is to do. And also there are always a lot of blog articles that are great. And also a lot of, depending on the difficulty of the niche or the competitiveness of the niche, there can be like, in some niches, you might need a lot of blog articles. In others, you might need a lot of backlinks, but if it's super competitive, you need both. So yeah, this really depends. You can do this on your own if you have the time or by yourself. But yeah, if you have any questions or if you need our help, don't be afraid to either leave a comment if you have a question or get in touch with me. Uh, I have my email listed in the description as well. So yeah, thank you. I hope this was helpful for you. Have a, have a great day.